IGN has made a number of videos that have been negative about the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Is a frustrating game to play. There are defenders of the game who are mad. People are now defending the video game. If these people spent more time playing the video game instead of defending it, then maybe it wouldn't need defending. Let's look at Arkham, Arkham Knight. So this game came out nine years ago. And right now it has the same amount of players as the Suicide Squad. I'm sure in a week, I wonder what's going to happen. And so you have a lot of people that are mad at IGN for covering this. We didn't get a review code. Let's bash this game until it dies and get ourselves blacklisted. I love how these people think that IGN saying the game sucks is somehow because they didn't get a review code. You know what else it could be because? Maybe because the game sucks. Suicide Squad kill the looter shooter. Uh-oh. Yeah, looking forward to killing the Justice League and all, but, uh, well, you know, these guns are a bit shit. For me, the disappointment of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League isn't just about its quality. It's about what it's not as much as about what it is. There's very little of what made developer Rocksteady's games so great in the past. Near unparalleled superhero power trips that sit alongside Insomniac's critically acclaimed Spider-Man series. It's also the latest in a frustratingly long line of beloved single-player championing studios delving into unwelcoming loot-invested live service waters. Nobody. I don't think the problem is that they're getting in to live service games. I think the problem is that the live service games that they're making are bad. That's the problem. Live service isn't the problem. Bad games are the problem. Never believes things can get this bad until it happens. It's been a perilous leap for many to take, with success limited to very few not called Bungie. And I hope we're now at the end of this detrimental trend. Blizzard. Blizzard made a live service game in 2004. It did pretty well for a long time. There's a lot of examples like Warframe. Warframe's doing pretty well. Uh, RuneScape. Uh, let's see. He said Looter Shooter. Oh, so he's only talking about Looter Shooters and not other games? Okay, yeah, sure. That's played so many. In recent years, BioWare abandoned the comfort of its trademark deep RPG writing in favor of Anthem's cold, hollow, RNG-fueled exosuits. It was the first real notable example of this happening, a studio ripping apart- I wonder what was the worst payoff? Anthem or buying a Bored Ape NFC? Which group of people lost more money? It's so hard to say. Apart it might be Anthem. I'm pretty sure it's Anthem. Trends popularized by the likes of Destiny. Bioware veteran James Olin told Rock Paper Shotgun that Anthem was the ultimate expression of that. Ooh. It got away from everything. It's kind of like the anti-Bioware game. Oh, that's a really great thing to tell your audience. Yeah, our game is like the games that you don't like. The, game, the new game that we're making, it's not like the games that you like. There have since been others chasing these online looter shooter trends. Who does this? Like, what it, what idiot thinks this is good messaging? Rapidly gone out of fashion with each passing year. Arcane these are none these are the same kinds of people that think that like, it thinks they they're the people that think that they're smart because they say they like Game of Thrones season eight. They're the people that like they like things that are bad, in the hopes that people will think that there's some sort of like sophistication in it. Of its best-in-class level design to the empty vampiric streets of Redfall. Crystal Dynamics promised much in its Marvel's Avengers campaign, but Ooh. lost its way completely regarding its live service offerings. This and most Marvel Avengers was a real impressive one. Like, I've never seen somebody suck a dick that big. Actually, that's not true. Um, I, uh... I've seen some other pretty bad game launch. I was gonna make a joke about something that happened recently, but I guess I won't. Um, anyway, uh... I think the truth is that Look, a lot of these kinds of games, it's not about it being a looter shooter, in my opinion. I think it's about being the, the quality of the game is bad. That's all there is to it. That's what it is more than anything else.
Recently, Rocksteady traded in their expertly designed Gotham for a shallow metropolis. Yep. Suicide Squad's main problem isn't in its art direction, character design, or storytelling, although mileage may vary on that last one. These are all things we've come to expect and enjoy from Rocksteady, masters of their craft when it comes to creating superhero open worlds. But while it has largely delivered on that trio of creative disciplines, the studio's other notable strengths, best-in-class campaign design, genre-leading combat systems, and engaging open worlds are the areas in which Suicide Squad has stumbled. And that faltering is rooted in the pivot to creating a long-time content delivery machine, aka a live service shooter. In the nine years it has taken I just feel like this game looks like fucking garbage, to be honest. Like, it looks like it came out in 2015. It's like Apex Legends looks better than this and it's free. ...based studio to finish work on Kill the Justice League, numerous examples of exactly the same kind of pivot project failing have come and gone. Yet, no change of direction has seemingly been mm -hmm. plotted. That's likely because of the weight of the AAA machine. Like a heavy cruise liner, it can be difficult to change the course of all those resources and staff when the journey begins. But the result of that is a wholly incongruous mess of a looter shooter, where bland gunplay makes neither canonical sense... Like, am I the only person, like, watch this gameplay? Do you even know what the fuck is going on? Holy incongruous mess of a looter shooter this? where bland gunplay makes neither canonical awful. sense nor an engaging gameplay loop. Oh, this will make yeah. my boomerangs jealous. Sorry, ladies. Gear progression and how it intertwines with talent trees and class abilities is a delicate balance that is by no means easy to achieve. Mm -hmm. The Borderlands series has historically done it very well, and while the Pandora Gunfests do have significant stories told throughout, you always get the feeling that developer Gearbox's focus is on making the most outrageous and fun arsenal to play with as possible. But Borderlands games are, of course, not live service. Tackling that added demand of a long, long life of ever-expanding content adds a whole new weight on top of all that to balance. A more pertinent example then... Yeah, I looked at some of the weapons with Suicide Squad whenever I watched gameplay, and there wasn't a single weapon that... Like, for example, whenever I watched Diablo 4 and I saw somebody using Chain Lightning, I was like, oh... Oh, yeah. Whenever I watched, like, somebody do, like, a whirlwind build, like, I saw Rob do that whirlwind build, I was like, yes, dude, right? And that's even with Diablo 4. Like, there is nothing with Suicide Squad that ever made me feel like, oh, that looks really cool. I love the power fantasy of that. I want to play it might be Diablo, which has achieved this as successfully as anyone over the years thanks to Blizzard, a studio whose very DNA is built around online multiplayer experiences. For almost 30 years, the developers refined a gameplay loop completely centred on chasing that next piece of loot. Mm -hmm. That desire to want to come back repeatedly and grind for the next piece of gear is key to the success of a loot-based game, and is what I look for over all else in the genre. Strike gold with that, and even games that possess just a slim... I mean, I, I think that Diablo 4 is... Uh... I just think it's kind of boring, right? It's kind of a boring game. Uh, like, it, it, it's not dynamic enough for me to, like, want to play every season. Like, I, I remember, like, season three came out, and I watched Quinn playing for, like, five minutes, and I was like, I'm going to go back to sleep. I, I don't, I don't want to go live. I'll just wake up later and play something else. You know, like, it, it doesn't feel MMO-ish, more co-op. I don't know of Rocksteady's storytelling chops, such as 2021's Outriders, can keep me engaged enough to keep playing thanks to fun weapons and abilities. Yeah. One note combat is a common thread between all of these Jesus. recent failed experiments. Redfall's selection of identical weapons oh. didn't offer anywhere near the sort of malleable approaches that Dishonored's blades and powers brought to encounters. Although Marvel's Avengers heroes did each have a set of abilities intrinsically linked to their character, the rope defending- The first Ascendant abilities are, are better. Like, how is it that you're losing to a free-to-play Nexon game in beta? It's pathetic.
and capture objective scenarios you were placed in offered limited thrills, and Anthem's mission design was near non-existent as you jetted around its open world searching for any semblance of Bioware's famous quest writing. Rocksteady created one of the most influential combat systems in the form of Batman Arkham's counter-based melee flow, and to step away from this and create a gun-based looter shooter was a bold move. Sadly, it just didn't pay off. Each gun feels fundamentally very similar to the next and last, with interesting perks and all. This is the problem that I think a lot of developers have with making good, like, FPS games, is that, like, the last game, I remember, oh, dude, was it Halo 3 that they finally added the fuel rod cannon, and you had, like, the energy sword, and you had uh, the, the gravity hammer, like, that shit felt good. You could, you could use fuel rod cannon in Halo 2? Was it, I thought it was like only in campaign. I don't remember ever using it in multiplayer. Yeah, the gravity hammer was Halo, Halo 2. The hammer was 3? Wait, holy fuck. I think you're right. Holy fuck, bro. Like, oh my god. I think actually you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember like, yeah, because you'd have the shotgun and then like you would charge and you'd shoot them right before they hit you. Yeah, wow, holy fuck, I got that confused. Oh my god. No, you're right, you're right. Um, anyway, like, I feel like with a lot of these new games, the focus is on balance so much that it's hard to make new cool weapons. And, like, I go back and I think about Ratchet and Clank. That is, like, to me, like, the pinnacle of really cool combat abilities that are non-melee. Like, Ratchet and Clank was fucking insane. It was so fucking fun, man. There's a deficit of imagination. Yeah, it's like, okay, you have a shotgun. Like, oh, wow. And, um... I don't know, I just... I think that they need to have more interesting weapons. Fires Jack and Daxter. A real premium. I thought Ratchet the least you'd expect better, from a looter personally. shooter is to have interesting have loot to though. shoot with, but the focus on that in Suicide Squad just isn't quite there. Yeah, you're making guns for us now, Bird Like Brain. even like here's another example. I think Overwatch guns are really good. I'm gonna say it. I know it's popular to hate Overwatch, but I think Overwatch has such a great different, uh, like a, a great difference of gameplay. Like, you have, like, Reinhardt plays so fundamentally different than Widowmaker. And even, like, for example, like, Ash plays way different than Widowmaker. And, like, the amount of different ways that you can play the game and the nuances of the weapons are so much more pronounced. And I just feel like in a lot of these games, it's just not there. Gen yeah, Genji is just so much more different. Like, I personally, um, you know, like, I, I still want to play that Malga guy, the new, uh, the new champion. I bet he's probably OP as fuck. Zenyatta is the best, changed my mind. I fucking hate him. But yeah. Yeah, they're unique characters. They are. They're interesting. It's your lucky day. I'm all for developers trying something new in an attempt to avoid things becoming stale, but successful new beginnings are rooted in a recognition of historic strengths. I wish Rocksteady had used its previous top-tier melee combat, dense open world, and thrilling storytelling experience as a base, rather than shifting to what is an all well, world look and at, thrilling like, story. So this is just like, these are boring stats. They're boring. I'm sorry, like, it's just not that good. Like, you gotta have better stats that are more interesting. Telling experience as a base, rather than shifting to what is an almost entirely different development format. This challenge is something, to its credit, that Sony has managed well with PlayStation Studios. Time is given to each creative team to make the project they want to make, with story-driven single-player games remaining a dominant focus. Naughty Dog has become the standard bearer for this philosophy in the years that Rocksteady spent making Kill the Justice League. But that isn't to say they didn't attempt to branch out to multiplayer in that time either, with Sony recently cancelling a stuttering The Last of Us online project. We'll never know how this would have turned out, but if recent history has told us anything, it's that halting development before it rumbles on for years might have been the right move by PlayStation. Just, just put it out of its misery. Take it out to the back of the barn and just shoot it in the fucking head. Like, there's a certain point where you just gotta do it. You gotta do it. And it's like, really, whenever you shoot them, 
You're not doing anything wrong. You're doing him a favor. You're putting him out of its misery. No, oh, it's a good decision. Something confirmed by Naughty Dog itself in the statement announcing the cancellation. Yeah. The studio said, To release and support The Last of Us Online, we'd have to put all our studio resources behind supporting post-launch yeah. content for years to come, severely impacting development on future single-player games. So we had two paths in front of us, becoming a solely live service game studio or continue to focus on single player narrative games that have defined Naughty Dog's heritage. And that's, that's another thing. Think about what, like, what happened after World of Warcraft. Well, we didn't really get any Blizzard single player games anymore. Like we got, I mean, Starcraft 2 is kind of like that, like a little bit, but like not really. Like that was about it. It's not to say that risks can't and shouldn't be taken, though, if approached in yeah. a sensible and measured manner. Interesting results Nobody can come... Nobody criticizes risks. People criticize fuck-ups. And that's really what it is. It's really just fuck-ups. ...from developers stepping out of their comfort zone and trying something new and dipping their toes into the water before diving head first. In regards to PlayStation, Sucker Punch's Legends expansion to 2020's Ghost of Tsushima was a well-constructed online co-op offering rooted in its fundamentally exciting sword combat. The experience was scaled appropriately for an experimental DLC, offering a small but rewarding pool of gear for progressing through missions, which culminated in a challenging multi-part raid full of memorable art direction. The key, though, was that this focus was narrow, adding a handful of hours of multiplayer fun onto an already solid single player base. I still want to see more Sucker Punch single player stories, but this smaller scoped experiment has at least given me confidence that they can make the looter shooter live service jump where others have fallen. Maybe well, it would have been wise for Rockstar. Here's a good example is like Armored Core 6. Whenever I was playing Armored Core 6, I think Armored Core 6 is the best iteration of PvP that From Software has ever done in terms of playability. Like, there's not a lot of lag. Uh, like, if you hit something on your screen, it gets hit. Like, in terms of, like, all of those, like, really, really simple things that Dark Souls, uh, like, uh, Dark Souls and Elden Ring PvP lack, like, dude, they totally nailed it with Armored Core 6. The servers are crisp. They are. They're really impressive test out some of Suicide Squad's online components in an Arkham Knight expansion before fully implementing those ideas nine years later. Unfortunately, it's still unclear to see how far those who leaped have fallen. It can't be a coincidence, though, that these studios all find themselves reverting back to what made them such respected names in the single-player space. BioWare is hoping to recapture that story-driven RPG magic with new Dragon Age and Mass Effect games in development. Arcane has light at the end of the tunnel with Marvel's Blade being helmed oh, yeah. by their Leon Studio, a stealth combat game that hopes are high for. Crystal I mean, guys, like, obviously the Blade game could be really good, but yeah, this is super cool, but like, this is like the video game hype paradox. The less you know about the game, the more you're excited for it. Like, we all know this could be fucking insane, right? Or it could be fucking garbage. I, I think a Blade game lends itself very much, like, the, the Blade universe and, like, the Blade character as, like, a vampire, as a sword and shit. Like, it lends itself very well to being a video game. That doesn't mean it's going to be good, though. Crystal Dynamics finds itself under the parasitic control of Embracer Group, who has seemingly done nothing but cancel projects and lay off staff since making their huge financial gamble. I hope the Tomb Raider studio manages to survive and thrive again. I sympathize with all these developers, none of whom set out to make games that would go on to be considered dead on arrival. Instead, eyes need to be turned towards those making the decisions, whether these be studio heads, publishers, or other executives, on what type of games these studios should be. I have to say that I think the UI, this UI is ridiculous. The graphics are mediocre. They're probably a downgrade from the game that came out seven years ago. The combat looks like it sucks. So, like, which dev, like, whose fault isn't it? Like, it seems like every, like, the story is stupid. So, I feel like everything about this game sucks. I don't think it's just the higher-ups that are like, oh, well, it's bad because it's live service. It being live service doesn't explain why the campaign was stupid. Come on.
make. The list of previously mentioned failures to launch should be the wake-up call needed to stop mismanaging talent and siphoning their passion into projects that benefit neither the developer's skill sets nor the player's ultimate enjoyment. It's a Did CD Projekt Red make an, make an FPS game before Cyberpunk 2077? No. Didn't seem to matter. No. A lesson that Warner Brothers seemingly never learned with Kill the Justice League, although hopefully one they've now learned, considering Suicide Squad's questionable success comes not long after the news that WB's own Hogwarts Legacy, a single-player open-world story-driven game, happened to be 2023's biggest-selling game. It's too soon uh, to- Yeah, but the biggest-selling game doesn't mean it's the highest-grossing game for revenue, though. Like, a lot of these games make millions of dollars post-launch through cosmetics. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely to keep that in mind. To say what's next for Rocksteady, which still has the first steps of its live service roadmap to make when Joker arrives as a playable character next month. Suicide Squad could buck the trend, becoming a huge success that grows strong as the months and years go on. I have my doubts though, I just hope it does well enough that a studio home to so much single player talent is allowed to spread its bat wings again. For more on Suicide Squad, check out our review, and for everything else Kill the Justice League, stick with IGN. I don't really hate looter shooter games, I don't think they're bad, but what I do think is bad is like when a developer chases a trend that they're clearly not intended for. And it's not like their forte, I guess you could say. And they try to do it even though they're not... It, it's not like this is a... Like CD Projekt Red wanted to make Cyberpunk. Like uh, From Software wanted to make Armored Core. And like I, I don't, I'm sure people that were at the studio wanted to make this game... But I can't imagine that like the enthusiasm would be the same versus something like the Arkham Knight series. I mean, this just seems like it's so dry. They're susceptible to exploit their projects. Otherwise, I love the idea of an ARPG with guns. Yeah, exactly. People who care about the game should make the game true. Yeah, it, it's just that simple. There's no way the devs are excited to make a looter shooter. I don't know. I mean, I I I mean, it would be fun. Like for example, like the once human game is kind of a looter shooter i thought that game was great like i dude i put a ton of hours into that game so yeah i don't think that's necessarily true but in a lot of cases it probably is